And good morning, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And this is what I call my morning musings as I share a, a cup of coffee with you. Hope, hope to get you, your day started off on a, on a good note. Uh, mine's going really well. Second or third cup of coffee here at uh, whatever time it is, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's early. But I appreciate you being with me. Uh, we are currently involved in a study of the already but the not yet of, of Scripture. And I'm focusing at the present time on the book of Revelation. Without any doubt whatsoever, it's a book about eschatology. Uh, it's where everyone seems to go. But the book of Revelation contains so many elements of the already but the not yet. <coughs> Pardon me. And when we examine those elements, it becomes really crystal clear of the time <clears throat> and the framework for the fulfilling of the book of Revelation. Really, uh, it, became, it becomes almost so simple that it makes us just stand back in wonderment and say, how did anybody come up with a late date application of this? An illustration of that is Revelation chapter 6. 9 and following. John said he saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held. And they cried out, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge us on those that are on the earth? And they were given, <coughs> pardon me, they were given white robes and told to rest a little while until their fellow brethren who should be slain as they were should be fulfilled. Now, in our last segment, we uh, demonstrated the perfect parallelism between Matthew 23, Jesus' teaching on the avenging of the martyrs, and Revelation chapter 6. I mean, the parallels are perfect, the time frame is exactly the same, and it demands a first century application to the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. The second observation that I want to make is that the answer to the martyr's prayer is, without a doubt, nobody controverts this, the answer to their prayer is depicted in Revelation 6, 12 and following, and it is called the great day of the Lord's wrath. Now, I want you to notice something about it. It says this is the day of the great day of the Lord's wrath, and who shall be able to stand before him in that day? Well, guess what? This is a direct echo, a direct allusion, if you please. I don't know if anybody even denies this. To Malachi chapter 3. The prediction of the Lord's coming to his temple in judgment. Now, here's what's critical about that. This coming of the Lord in Malachi chapter 3 when no one would be able to stand before him, is the time depicted in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, in which the Lord says, I will come near to you in judgment. I will, I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer, against those who pervert justice, who mistreat the widow and the orphan, and who deprive the foreigner of his place. Here's what's critical about this. This is a direct citation, <coughs> pardon me, of Exodus 22 and Deuteronomy. The Lord said to Israel, if you mistreat the widows and the orphans and you deprive the foreigner of his rightful place, and see what that meant is foreigners, those not of the tribe of Israel, if they join themselves to Israel by, observe, by observing Torah, guess what? They were to be considered as native-born sons. Some were denying them that place. But notice, in Exodus chapter 22, God said, if you do these things, if you violate Torah, I will bring judgment against you. I will bring national judgment on you. Do you see a train coming? Malachi chapter 3 is the prediction of the coming of the Lord in the application of of covenant sanctions from the law of Moses. Now that means the law of Moses had to be in effect for God to apply those covenant sanctions. 
But the coming of the Lord in Revelation chapter 6 would be in fulfillment of Malachi chapter 3. <clears throat> the Lord's coming in application of Mosaic covenant sanctions. Therefore, the coming of the Lord of Revelation chapter 6 had to be at a time when the law of Moses, with its covenant sanctions, was still in effect. Huh. Everyone says the law of Moses has been removed today. Well, everybody except the dominionists. And they try to say, well, this part's done away with, and that part's done away with, but we've still got this, and oh, we've got that little part over here as well. But the point of fact is, folks, the coming of the Lord in Revelation chapter 6 was to be in the application of Mosaic covenant sanctions. Jesus said, <clears throat> keep in mind that Jesus said all of the martyrs would be avenged at his coming, coming of the Lord in A.D. 70. You couple that with the fact that it that the coming of the Lord of Revelation 6 would be in the application of Mosaic Covenant sanctions. And you have two things. Number one, the passing of Torah at the coming of the Lord in A.D. 70. And you have the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 3 in the application of Mosaic Covenant sanctions. That was in A.D. 70 because... Jesus said, speaking of the fall of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, These be the days of vengeance in which all things that are written must be fulfilled. You see the perfect correlation? So we have Matthew 23 <clears throat> correlating with Revelation 6, pointing irrefuta irrefutably to A.D. 70. We have Malachi chapter 3 being applied in Revelation chapter 6, and Malachi 3 would be an application of Mosaic Covenant sanctions, and everybody says, oh, guess what? Mosaic Covenant is not applicable today. Okay, it was applicable in AD 70. <clears throat> two markers, two markers that point us undeniably to the fulfillment of Revelation 6 in A.D. 70. Here is the already, the vindication of the martyrs, the giving of the white robes, the not yet, <clears throat> pardon me, at the great day of the Lord's wrath in fulfillment of Malachi chapter 3, the Lord's coming, in which no one would be able to stand before Him. We've got more on Revelation chapter 6, that if anything, <clears throat> <clears throat> and if possible, we'll nail it down even more that the fulfillment of Revelation 6 and the already but the not yet was fulfilled in AD 70. You don't want to miss it. And don't forget, I've got this information and a whole lot more in my book, Who is This Babylon? Go to my website, www.eschatology.org. It's been completely revamped. Should be ready just any time now. My website, www.bibleprophecy.com. Enter the code 7070. Order the book, Who is This Babylon? I will pay the shipping. You just got to have this book in the discussion of the already but the not yet, the martyr vindication and the fulfillment of these Old Testament prophecies of the great day of the Lord, which the New Testament undeniably posits at AD 70. Get your copy of the book, Who is This Babylon, today, and we will see you on the flip side. You have a great day.